Hello everyone and welcome to the UCM SHARE Collections Care Conference, Shared Knowledge and Sustainable Future. Today I'm going to be talking about working sustainably. My name is Lorraine Finch and I am Director of LF Conservation and Preservation. I'm an accredited conservator, digital constellator and committed conservationist. Now, I've been an environmentalist my entire life. One of my earliest memories was playing in the garden and I have to say deliberately poking the buddleia bush to release clouds of many and various different butterflies. Now, I get annoyed by the message that it's difficult to be green. It's very easy to be green and to live and work sustainably. My presentation will cover the simple steps that you can take in order to work sustainably. But before we move on, I would like to say that there's more to acting and working sustainably than reducing your carbon footprint and reducing your use of plastics, although these are the sustainability topics of the moment. There are such things as increasing biodiversity, which is the United Nations Sustainability Development Goal 17, sorry, 15, which is SDG 15. There's equality, which are SDGs 4, 5 and 10. Food and water, SDGs 1, 2 and 6. So remember that in total there are 17 UN Sustainability Development Goals. Today we're going to cover the four R's and reducing your digital footprint. Now, before we start, let's think about what we mean by the term sustainability. This term is bandied around by people who generally then don't define what they mean. Now in business, I've used sustainability, I've seen sustainable used to describe businesses which simply have a future, as in they are economically viable and they will be able to trade into the foreseeable future. In terms of environmental sustainability, I have used, I've seen the term sustainable palm oil used many times. Now this simply means that the more palm oil can be planted after the crop has been harvested. And it neglects to mention the fact that virgin rainforest was cleared in the first place to make way for the crop. The United Nations, Define sustainable as development which meets the needs of the present without compromising the needs of future generation to meet their own needs. Nisnet in 2020 gave the following definition. Sustainability means healthy people, communities and environments now and in the future. Now of these two, the best one for me is the Nisnet because it relates to environmental sustainability and talks about the environment. Most definitions of sustainability relate to human needs and forget to include the needs of the planet and the many life forms that we share it with. So when I talk about sustainability, I'm referring to it in its broadest sense, the capacity for the biosphere and human civilization to coexist. Now the four R's, you'll see them written variously, but basically they're all asking you to do the same thing, which is to look at what you use to use less and produce less waste. So for this presentation, we're going to look at the four R's being refuse, reduce, reuse and recycle. And let's look at each one of those in turn. So starting with refuse, look at what you buy and what you use in your workplace and refuse to purchase wasteful and non-recyclable products. Look at what you have already. Do you need to buy more? An order of the materials, tools and equipment that you use is a really good idea. And you should do this for your collections, care items and the materials and equipment that you use in your office. You might even want to go through the workplace kitchen. Now, very recently I've carried out um, tidy up of my entire workspace. I've had to empty everything from it. Now this has been a really useful thing for me to do. I now have more sheets of paper to print on than I ever thought that I will ever need in my entire working career. 
in planning this uh, workshop today or this presentation today, I used the reverse of the abstracts from the Iron Gall Inc. conference in 2020. Basically, I've got a free 50 page notebook because I'm using the, the reverse side of the pages. So ensure what you have is well stored and easy to access. So you know what you have and you avoid buying duplicates. And I have another example of this from a friend who has tidied out their workspace. At the end of that tidy up, they found they had four tins of beeswax because basically what they'd done is every time they needed some beeswax, they couldn't find it because they'd not put it down in the same place every time. And they thought, oh, I'll just buy another one. And so they bought more. So they ended up with four tins of beeswax. So let's move on to reduce. Reduce. Reduce your harmful, wasteful and non-recyclable products. Use the minimum amount of any material um, necessary to avoid unnecessary waste. So for example, print on both sides of the paper. That's going to reduce your use of paper by 50%. Question, do you need to purchase this? If you do, can you buy it secondhand or can you buy a reconditioned um, one? So for example, I buy my weights from charity shops. Generally, most of my weights have come from charity shops. The laptop that this talk was written on was written on a reconditioned laptop. And I have a great example of a project that I'm working on at the moment. So I'm working on a, a digital project and one of the developers developed Standing Desk Envy from one of the other developers. So he bought brand new a Standing Desk, which arrived. Now, I don't know about you, but I like really like programs such as Antiques Road Trip and Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is, where the experts go around flea markets and antique shops and they buy stuff to sell at um, auction. Now, my overriding feeling that I get from that when I watch it is that all of the stuff that humankind has produced over many generations, tables, chairs, wardrobes, glasses, mugs, we never need to make any of those ever again. And one of the things that I've been seeing more frequently in recent episodes are lecterns coming out of universities, out of old grammar schools, out of um, defunct churches. Now they would be absolutely excellent to repurpose into a standing desk. There's no need to buy a new standing desk. So in terms of reducing your usage, what you can also do is question the usual. If you always store your items in plastic, really useful boxes, for example. Do you need to use plastic, really useful boxes? Can you use a cardboard box? Can you use a cardboard box for temporarily moving a collection from one place to another rather than using um, a plastic box? Work with other organizations to reduce the amount of materials that you're purchasing. So for example, you might want only half a packet of acid-free tissue, but of course you're going to have to buy a whole packet can you find another organisation that wants half a packet of acid-free tissue? If you can't work with other organisations, can you share things within your organisation? So can you loan equipment or hand tools around your organisation or indeed with other organisations if you can? And a final point on reducing is repair. So repair items rather than replacing them. So my previous laptop to the one that I'm using now, the reconditioned one, I had it for five years and it was no longer really working particularly fast or talking to the internet properly because it was running out of memory space. So I checked on the internet about how I opened it up and what I needed to do, bought two new memory cards, opened it up, inserted those and got another five years out of it and had that for 10 years and Apple cheekily referred it to it as a vintage Apple Mac. So let's move on to reuse. Use materials in your workplace that are reusable and replace single use items. Remember to use them first and then repurpose or recycle them. Care for your tools and equipment. So brushes and hand tools and all those sorts of things. If you keep them clean um, and store them well, they'll last for many, many years. A lot of the materials that you use for um, collections care and display can be reused. So boxes can be cleaned and reused, display cabinets can be reused also. 
See if you can share items. So you may have cleared your office out, as I just have, and you have lots of files and file dividers and paper that you no longer need. Share those around. So a great example of this was Ely Museum, who had a refurbishment a couple of years ago, and it refurbished the entire museum, including all of their office space. So they put outside on the, the road their tables, chairs, files, and so forth, that they no longer needed. And just put a note on there saying, free, please take away. And they also offered them on their social media as well. You can also set up an area in your workplace called an upcycle station where you can put things like clean jam jars, clean takeaway trays, cardboard boxes, tin cans, paper, packaging from materials that have been delivered, all the old packaging materials for other people within your organisation to just come along and take to reuse. And let's look at the final one, recycle. So recycling used to be the sustainability go-to. It was the first thing that you thought about, but now it's last on the list. And before you recycle anything, think about how you can reuse it. So a really good example of this is um, a conservator who is taking nitrile gloves that have been used, that she is washing them, and she's filling them full of sand to use as weights um, when she's carrying out a treatment or whether she, when she's examining an object. So before you recycle anything, think about how you can repurpose that first. Now, the reason why recycling is now last on the list is that it takes energy. So it takes energy for the materials to be collected from your workspace and then go off to the recycling centre. It then takes energy to convert those materials into their component parts and into something else. Not all of the material can be recycled. There's always some loss and some virgin material will always have to be added in order for the material to become something else. And one final point on the four R's is please do be careful. Not all seemingly sustainable solutions are that. So for example, catering companies have moved away from single use plastics to uh, providing wooden cutleries and paper plates. These often end up either going into landfill or being incinerated because they're not properly sorted at the time, so they get contaminated with non-recyclable material, or they're um, contaminated with food waste. Another thing, the um, compostable plastic bags that now are being wrapped around our professional journals to be sent to us, they quite often end up in landfill also. Um, and not only that, they, some of them are made of cornstarch, which is a genetically modified crop. It's imported and virgin forests are cleared to grow it. And as I said, quite often, if they go into the normal waste disposal um, line, they will be incinerated or they will be um, go into landfill because the waste disposal companies don't have the facilities to compost them. So let's move on to the digital, your digital carbon footprint and what you can do to reduce that. Now, the advent of virtual meetings um, has been hailed as a great thing, a real big leap forward in sustainability and reducing your carbon footprint. But let's have some stats. So if information and communications technology was a country, it would be the third highest consumer of electricity after the USA and China. If the internet was a country, it would be the sixth largest greenhouse gas polluter. That's equivalent to the emissions of Australia, Denmark and the UK combined. The environmental considerations that you need to think about with digital are energy consumption, mining the minerals to create the products in the first place, and e-waste dumps. So what happens to the materials after you've finished using them? Now, there are many simple steps that you can take to reduce your digital carbon footprint. One of them is to move your data storage to the cloud. So to shift to a cloud based uh, storage could reduce your energy consumption by 38 percent. But please be sure to use a green cloud provider. So one that's renewably powered, who is transparent and accountable on their energy sources, their greenhouse gas emissions and their targets. You can use a green search engine such as Ecosia and follow the four R's. So opt for a refurbished device, use it for as long as possible, repair, 
and pass it on to a new user when it's got to the, the end of its life with the user or recycle it. And the really big one that you can do in terms of reducing your um, carbon footprint is to reduce your energy. Now, the sim seemingly simple things that you do on your computer, such as answering email, all use energy. So if you've got an email that's been sent out to many people, try to limit your use of reply all. If you only need to reply to one or two of those people, just reply to those, because the more emails you send, the more energy you're using. Remove unnecessary text from emails. This is a really big bugbear of mine. So you might be having a conversation that's being passed backwards and forwards and 10 emails have gone backwards and forwards. And each previous email is attached to the email that you've just answered. Now, all of those previous emails, great though it is to follow the chain, will have an energy usage. So cut it down to the bare minimum. Only reply to, the, only put in the text that you want to reply to unsubscribe from newsletters. So things that you know, newsletters that you get, you don't read anymore, unsubscribe to them because that's all using energy. Turn off your screen when you're in online, online meetings. Though it's lovely to see everybody, that's all using energy. Dim the power of the screen when you're working. So dimming the screen from 100% to 70% could save 20% of the energy that you use. Clear out your browser history, delete items from the bin, and remove old messages from your email. When you're on the internet, reduce the number of tabs you have open because every tab you have open is taking energy. Shut down your computer when you're away from it for more than two hours and set it to go on to sleep mode after a set amount of time. You could try using a tablet or a smartphone instead of your laptop or desktop because the smaller the device, the less energy it actually uses. And the spring clean that I've just mentioned, carry this out for all of your um, equipment, not just your laptop and desktop. So also do this for your smartphone and your tablet. And remember the internet of things. So the internet of things is all of the stuff that you use to support your, your digital use. So you might be buying a laptop case, you might purchased a hard drive or a memory stick or earphones or earbuds or microphones or a tripod to put your, um, your phone on because you want to do some filming. That's the internet of things. And again, I go back to this, this antiques road trip. When people go around the shops, they're all the stuff that we produced years ago that we no longer need. Vesta cases, uh, pocket watches, um, chatelaines, card cases. Things that were considered essential at the time, but we, we don't use anymore. They can be repurposed, they're nice to have. The great thing about them is most of them are made from materials that degrade. Or the, um, they can be, they're made of metals that can be melted down and turned into something else. This is really very not the case with the Internet of Things. Most of the things on the Internet of Things are made from plastic. And I very much doubt that in a hundred years from now, somebody will want to go into an antique shop and buy a pair of plastic earbuds. So just reduce the amount of the internet of things that you are purchasing. And a few points that we've not covered so far. So some of the most powerful sustainability solutions receive comparatively little attention. We talk a lot about renewable energy resources such as um, an LED lighting and insulation, but the top three most effective ways of reducing greenhouse gas emissions are food waste reduction, high quality and inclusive education. So basically education women, ed educating women and girls and plant rich seasonal diets. And another thing that is very powerful is speaking up. Come together with your colleagues to make change on a bigger scale. You might feel that your voice is very small that you're powerless and bottom of the heap. And I hear that so much that, what can I do? I'm just one person at work. I'm bottom of the heap. I've got such a small voice. Nobody is going to listen to me, but you are powerful. One person can change the world. You might feel that the small steps that we've been talking about today are not going to save the planet, but you are making a contribution. It's the cumulative effect of the actions that will have the significant impact. So a really great tweet a few months ago that said, ah, 
it's only one t-shirt said three billion people. Now let's turn that around and say, it's only one t-shirt said three billion people, so I won't buy it. I just want to share some resources with you. So we'll do that now. So here are some resources for you. The briefing report at the top, which is for Julie's bicycle, about digital um, sustainability, some resources called Click Click Green from, Green, uh, from Greenpeace about uh, the green internet and checking out your carbon footprint, Ecosia, which is the green search engine, and 16 sim simple steps from Count on Us, um, which are the most effective ways of reducing your carbon footprint. So thank you very much for listening to my talk today, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much.